When you step outside, tune into your senses and activate your curiosity. There is no end to the amount of mysteries you can investigate. Engaging in the process of nature inquiry or any other type of inquiry can be really fun. As your observations lead to questions, your questions often lead to further observations, especially if you look for evidence for explanations you've come up with as you grapple with why questions. We call this iterative process of observation and thinking spinning the wheel, first coined by beloved UCSC professor Ken Norris. Spinning the wheel can get messy, but in a good way. As the wheel metaphor implies, it is not linear, and you can often find yourself exploring a variety of spokes along the wheel as you investigate different aspects of your particular mystery. This is where field journals come in. Field journals provide a space to work out the complexities you confront, and if done well, they create a historical document that you and potentially others can reference far into the future. Journals are used in many disciplines, including natural history, science, art, writing, philosophy, journalism, and psychology. Many of you have likely kept a journal at some point in your life. Whether for personal reflection or as part of some school assignment, the process of journaling can greatly enhance your learning and connection with the topic you're focused on and with yourself. In a nutshell, your field journal is a place to record your observations and thoughts by using your own creative combination of writing, drawing, and data collection. As many of you have probably experienced, there is a special synergy that occurs when you combine observing, thinking, writing, and drawing. Naturalists, scientists, and artists have developed frameworks that allow their field journals to be informative, easy for others to reference, and creative. Here are a few tips for how to do this with your own journal. First, remember that each time you document an observation, you're creating a data point. Providing context for your observation gives this data point more meaning. That's why we always include the following information at the start of each field journal entry. Name, time, date, location, weather conditions, the habitat you're in, and your objective. This method was developed by zoologist Joseph Grinnell of UC Berkeley back around the turn of the 20th century. Once you've written down this context, it's time to jump into the body of a journal entry. Here are a few pointers. Try to record your process of spinning the wheel. Describe the key observations you made, list all the questions you had and tried to answer, explain how you developed your hypotheses and the process you went through to find evidence to support them. Strive to include a combination of writing, drawing, and quantifying your observations. Strive to write in complete sentences whenever you can. In some cases, however, a bulleted list or a table can be the way to go. Use descriptive words as much as possible. Some of you may think that you can't draw. Toss aside that kind of thinking and treat your drawings like diagrams of information. Use lots of labels, indicate scale, and don't worry about making anything pretty. Quantifying your observations can happen in a variety of ways. You can measure things like length or speed, count things like numbers of leaves or numbers of times an animal does a particular behavior, and compare and contrast aspects of organisms or the organisms themselves. Strive to write and draw in your journal while you are out in the field exploring. You will invariably forget or distort your observations and questions if you wait to write about your experience hours or days later. Be humble when writing your observations and interpretations of what you might think is going on. Perhaps it is this. Maybe it is that. This language of uncertainty helps you to stay open to the possibility that new observations could lead you to devise new explanations that you never thought of initially. Remember that the animal or whatever organism or phenomenon is the authority. Keep observing and minimize placing human emotions or experiences on the things you're investigating. Don't worry if you don't know the name of something you're observing. You can still observe and think about something without knowing its common name. And if you want, you can give things your own names, which can help you remember the next time you encounter them. You can also consult books, experts, or apps like iNaturalist to help you discover the common name of an organism you're observing. Be creative and personal. Make your journal your own. Experiment with how you organize your entries on a page. Write poetry, draw comic strips, have fun with the process. You can even include your own personal reflections. Just remember to separate them out from your observations if you don't want your teacher to read them. Field journaling is a practice, and like all practices, the more you do it, the more you get out of it. 
Your learning curve will increase and you will create something you can look back on far into the future. And who knows, maybe what you document in your journal will end up being important for biodiversity conservation. It wouldn't be the first time. On another note, you may have noticed Frankie and I using some tools, such as binoculars and hand lenses, in the last three videos. These particular tools can enhance your sense of sight and allow you to see things that are impossible to see with the naked eye. This may lead to new discoveries and intriguing questions. In addition to these, there are other tools out there that may help. From audio recorders, to measuring tape, to GPS, to apps like iNaturalist and eBird, there are a lot of options. Whatever you decide to use, make sure you have your pen and field journal and remember that it all starts with you heading outside to engage your senses and your curiosity. There are lots of opportunities at UCSC to get outside and learn about the natural world, ranging from outdoor recreation hikes to introductory field classes to 10-week-long field classes that travel and camp outdoors for an entire quarter. If you're interested in doing more, contact the Norris Center and the Campus Natural Reserve and we'll help you find more of these opportunities. Thanks for coming along on this field inquiry journey. We hope to see you out there.